Hey everybody, I just wanted to kind of give you some information about the next few weeks. And before I start, if you have any questions, you can email whsedtech at eansisd.net. That'll actually go to both myself, uh, Ms. Johnson, and also Mr. Hansen, and, and either one of us can answer that pretty quickly for you. So, you know, there are lots of things that you may not be thinking about right now. We know this is a super crazy, busy time of year, um, especially being a senior. And so we just kind of wanted to talk about, you know, access to accounts and emails, access to papers and assignments and media and class handouts. You know, it's, it's kind of one of those things when myself and Mr. Hansen were in high school, you know, we brought home notebooks and things like that, and we stored them in the garage, and we didn't have to make decisions about what to keep and, and what not to keep for many, many years, whereas most students right now, a lot of the stuff that you have is is not, you know, paper and pencil. It's, it's a lot of it is digital, and so you really do have to think about, you know, what you want to keep before your accounts are shut down, so we kind of wanted to get that um, at the forefront. Each one of you should have received, uh, when we went into all the classrooms, uh, should have received this handout. It's got all of the directions and the dates and things like that, and we will walk through this. This will also be available um, via your email. We'll send this out to all seniors. So the first thing before we talk about you know documents and things like that is the iPad pickup. So all senior iPads will be picked up May 17th through May 24th in the Commons all day. Um, that's periods one through eight. And so just be thinking about, you know, if you have another device or if you don't have any assignments or things like that that are due, then you may just want to turn it on May 17th. If you have assignments and things like that, you know, feel free to keep it till the 24th or any time during there. Additionally, we wanted to kind of talk to you about, at least give you a few things um, to think about. We, it should be noted, though, that Mr. Hansen and myself are not responsible for setting any of the prices or negotiating any of the prices um, or assessing any of the devices. We're kind of just providing you with this information. So the three costs, um, the iPad charging cord, charging brick, and the keyboard charging cord are all fixed costs. That keyboard charging cord is $5. It's a little black micro USB cord. The iPad charging cord is $17.50. And the iPad charging brick is also $17.50. They will not accept an iPhone charging brick. So just a heads up on that. Now, the iPad, that's really not the iPad and keyboard case. It's just the keyboard case is normally $130. I put an asterisk by it because it really just depends on insurance. Um, you know, they're, they're pretty lenient on some of the wear and tear. If it's missing some of the little rubber pieces, that's, you know, like the little kind of circles, then it's not such a big deal. If it's missing a key or two. Um, has a few minor dents, you know, things like that. Also, we had an issue with the hinges, so a lot of that's actually covered by insurance. Kind of, it was a manufacturing issue. So what I would do is, I would, you know, go to tech services sooner rather than later and have them assess it, so you have a good idea. I think that 130 is if the case is just completely damaged um, or you know doesn't exist, you don't have it anymore. But again. Before the 17th, I would double check with tech services. They can give you a better quote on that information. So that being said, kind of all of the iPad being turned in, we also wanted to just kind of give you a heads up. So some of you, you know, might be going directly to college. Some of you might be going into, you know, a stopgap year. Some of you might have, you know, a job. It, it just depends. But what I will tell you is... I know for me, I took, you know, a lot of English classes when I got to college and I, you know, read Romeo and Juliet again and wish I had had access to the essay, you know, that I'd written or, or kind of my notes. Same thing. We teach a lot of high level courses here like chemistry and pre-cal and, and physics and things like that. And you might want to have access to your notes. You may change your major and decide, oh, wow, I really wish I had access to those notes. So. Uh, notability, Google Classroom, you know, things in email, things in other apps, things in um, your photo roll, videos that you've created, things in Google Drive. What I would tell you is that the best thing you can do is create one folder in Google Drive, call it high school stuff, and basically just drag and upload every single thing that you want to keep within that folder. Now, it, it sounds simple, but, you know, there's a lot of different ways to get things into Google Drive. So if you go to whsedtext.weebly.com, 
we have um, set up kind of like a little choose your own adventure. You can see it here. It says seniors and iPads. And if you tap on a guide to help with gathering and archiving all high school work, then it's going to take you to kind of a, a choose your own adventure. And it might say, do you want to access to the notes you took in class using Notability? Here you would say yes. And then you're going to click on next. And um, just like in the handout, it'll have the same directions. Plus it'll have a quick two or three minute video. If I go to the next one, it's going to ask me another question. Do you want access to work in Google Classroom? I might say no in this case. I might say no here as well. And then I might say yes here for Google Drive. And then again, it's going to give me a video. And it's also going to give me directions on Google Takeout, which I'm about to um, go into. Once you go to takeout.google.com, um, I would recommend doing this on a device that you own and, and not an iPad. I would recommend doing this on a laptop or a computer because um, it's going to download pretty much all of your files. I would also recommend when you go to the site, you're going to sign in with your EANS ISD information. And, you know, you can basically take out anything, but really if you, you know, turn on calendars and bookmarks, it's, it downloads file formats that aren't going to be super helpful for you. So I would recommend just turning on Google Drive. You see how I've got it in blue. And then depending on how many files you have decided to take out from Google, um, if you have you know, an entire 12 years worth of work, then it might take up to 48 hours. If you only have a few files, it might take only a few minutes. But you'll receive an email to your school email, and it'll say, hey, you know, everything's ready, um, download archive. When you tap on download archive, again, you need to do this on a preferably a laptop or a computer that you own. You'll click download and it will download all of the files in file formats that are useful to you. So for example, Google Slides will download as a PowerPoint. Um, you know, any Google Docs will download as um, basically a Word document. So you'll have access to all of those in file formats that you can use. And you know, if you want to you know, access them later when you're in college or beyond or wherever it is that you, know, you end up um, after your time here, then you'll have access to them. And that's really kind of the most important thing. So we also knew that it was a stressful time of year. Seniors have a lot going on. So on May 16th, uh, myself and Mr. Hansen will be available in the Shrinking Shack during fourth and fifth period to help with any of this process. And on May 23rd in the SHAP room, uh, again, during fourth and fifth period, we'll be available to help seniors with this process. I always think it's important to kind of give one more thing, and I've also noticed that a fair number of our juniors and seniors have, you know, their own laptops or they end up getting, you know, their own laptops for college or, or whatever it is that they end up doing, again, beyond, you know, the time that they have with us. So because they're not going to have our iPads and, and our apps anymore, I wanted to share three apps that I felt like were really useful, and I've talked to a fair number of college students who also kind of find these three pretty useful. Now, all three of these are free apps, um, and all three of them are available pretty much on any device, um, a browser as well as um, a Mac download and a PC download. The first one is Evernote. It's probably one of my favorites. I've used it for many, many years. And you can create notebooks, and then you can put notes into the notebooks. Especially for a lecture course, it's great because you can you know, record your lectures or record notes and things like that, um, the audio piece of it, kind of like you have done in Notability. And a lot of different apps work really well with Evernote. So the other thing I like about Evernote is it is a Mac and a PC download and unlike Google Docs, you know, it's, it's always available offline, which I really like because sometimes I don't know if I'm going to be offline until I'm offline and then I can't make something available offline. So that's kind of helpful. Uh, I started with Evernote, but OneNote is essentially kind of the same concept, um, but it's more of a Microsoft environment and they've got a little bit more color scheme than Evernote has. So definitely look into that if that's something. You've still got notebooks and you can have sections and then you can have notes in them. You still have an audio recorder and all of those pieces. And if you like the Microsoft environment, this would be a really good app to kind of test out. The last one is called Wonderlist, and again, it's available on both Mac and PC as well as browser. And it's great. It's a collaborative to-do list. And you can add all kinds of different things to it. You can create folders. So you might have um, different to-do lists. You might have one for school. You might have one for personal. It might have one that's like, you know, packing for college or something. 
and you can make it a collaborative to-do list. You can also, um, you know, talk kind of, it's got a little bit of a chat feature in it as well. And you can star items so, you know, you can have access to them kind of always at the top. They're kind of important sort of things. You can do searches. It's, it's a great tool. It's super easy. And I, I like tools that are downloads rather than, so they're running, you know, as an actual program on my computer rather than having to always access them in a browser. A browser. So that's really nice. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to email whsedtech at eansisd.net. We're always happy to answer those. Thank you.